Okay, we're back. We're live. It's uh, it's 1 p.m. for the movie show with George Kaysen and I. We're going to discuss movies that you find on cable. There are so many of them. We're awash in really interesting movies. Now, not all movies are interesting, but a lot of them are. And it's like, you know, there's something new, something terrific every day. I feel like my horizon is expanding every day. And that's wrong because I'm doing it at home, sitting in the same chair, not getting out much. But the fact is that I am I am exploring the planet and the human experience through these movies. And frankly, at this point in time, the news is repetitive. The news is festooned with commercials I've seen a, a thousand times before. So it's earlier and earlier that I will go to Netflix or Amazon every day. George, welcome to your show. Thank you, Jay. Welcome. Welcome. Good seeing you. So we're going to talk about Michael Douglas. We're talking about the Kaminsky method, which which had a very interesting season, uh, what, a year or two ago. We like that. But they're back with another season and a very droll, um, informative uh, kind of humor that 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 makes you, if you're old, it makes you feel a little better because these guys are having mm, the problems of age in every which way. It's a study of aging, isn't it? Yeah, part of it, part uh, part of the plot is aging. Yeah, or well, they talk about all their maladies, which I'll discuss. While I don't have at my age, and I'm older than 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 Michael, uh, the, you know, Sandy over there, and uh, and your two shows, your vegan <coughs> show with what's her name, uh, Kumik, um, and then Lillian, the Lillian, yeah, Lillian Kumik, yeah, Lillian Kumik and Wendy O. There's and we have a third one too. We have a third with Larry Grimm. Oh, I haven't seen that. I mean, we have three of, shows that deal with aging. You do a lot of public service, Jay, with your think tech. And, you know, if people would only be a little more helping themselves rather than going, as I was telling Eric before the show started, going and popping a pill for every stupid malady, they wouldn't <laughs> have these in my old days. So I don't have that. I mean, I, I've gone to my, I, I don't have the prostate problems. My, my um, hepatologist, he tells me that amazing, it's almost zero, zero, zero PSA. It's, well, it's how you if Michael it. Douglas isn't telling you about things you have now, he's telling you about things you're going to have. So make notes, George. Well, hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully, if I keep this up, I should be okay. You know, we'll see. I'm almost, I'm, I'm 73, almost 70, going on 74 in October. So this show is right up your alley. It really is. And and anyone who is either, you know, conscious of growing old or will be conscious uh, can learn a lot and enjoy the humor of it. Very droll humor. I mean, Alan Arkin is really one of my favorite guys in the world. And he is so yeah, uh, so he, he looks he makes Larry David look dull. <laughs> yeah. Very good, very good series. Very excellent. I, I laughed a lot here, but a lot of seriousness too, as you said, True. True. and a lot of people dying of leukemia and, and other diseases. So it's it's but it's 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 a comedy of sorts as well. Yeah. So talk about Michael Douglas. You know, I mean he's been in so much, we've seen him, we've grown up with him. And, you know, this kind of, you know how the, the, the mask comes off, so to speak, where you realize that even in movies where he was the number one hero, there's a certain vulnerability about him, a certain self-effacing quality uh, that always made him appealing. But it, it is um, much more the case in this series, because uh, even though he, you know, he doesn't go out of his way to admit error, he gets involved in all kinds of trouble. <laughs> it th things happen to him. Yeah. And, and he handles it in a way that characters in his hero movies might have handled it years ago. He's fairly consistent that way. And I think he's well, well cast for the series, don't you think? Oh, definitely. I mean, he's definitely, you know, is perfect for the role that he's playing, given his his persona and his acting ability from previous uh, movies and, and series, yeah. And so for the benefit uh, of our viewing off audience, uh, George, why don't you describe the role he's playing? Who is he? Uh, what does he do? Uh, how does he spend his time? He's an acting coach in Hollywood, in LA, right? And he's got this class, right? And uh, he's a sort of, a, not a failed actor, but 
just had bit parts like I had bit parts, you know, never really achieved that success. And uh, he goes through, he's got this uh, Mindy, he's got a daughter from his ex-wife played by... Uh, who, she's, she's very quick and very, um, very, you know, quick lines and all that. Well, it's very well written. It really is. I mean, I like to meet the writer, but his daughter Mindy is not what you would call a beautiful woman. Not at all. But a personality, good. She's got personality and she's sort of strong woman, feisty, you know, maybe yeah. because coming from a family divorcee, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and Sandy Kaminsky played by Michael Douglas. He's had a series like Henry VIII. He's had a series of marriages, right? And his first wife, Kathleen Turner, which I didn't recognize because she's really doesn't look like she looked when she was younger, you know, she's yeah. aged, you know, and, and she plays the first wife and she sort of got an interesting personality too. And Mindy and her sort of have a similar personality. So the, the casting was, and, and the, the, the way they, the roles, are, the writers are, you know, right on, on target. So it's all, sort of all, all meshes together very well, you know. So, uh, yeah, so Sandy's, uh, but then at the end, because he's very close friends with the Alan Arkin role, which is um, uh, Norman A Irving Newlander. Se season yeah. three, season three, you o it opens up with his funeral, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Newlander's funeral, because I, I read that he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't want to do a third season. He had other gigs he had to do, so they had to kill him off. So there was no nothing that came of what he was sick. You didn't see him sick all of a sudden from season. Yeah, he's two. gone, yeah. He's gone. So that was because of the circumstances. So so Alan Arkin's role uh, was his very close friend of Sandy. And they sort of have a, a, a crazy relationship. They sort of put each other down. Very New York. Very, very New York. odd couple, odd couple, you know, yeah, same different. thing. Odd, odd kind. So, Walter Matthau and and, and uh, Lemon, Jack exactly, Lemon. <laughs> so a, a very nice, you know, interaction, and, and the, the two of them how they back back and forth, you know. So um, yeah, so Alan Arkin is also phenomenal in, in his role, you know. Just like Mindy, you know, she plays that role very well. They all, they, all the roles now. Phoebe, uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, uh, Edelstein. I, I got to get these names. Get them. Lisa Edelstein. She plays her role. She's a druggie and an alky. You know, she's got all kind of, and a, a problem child. This is know? Newlander's daughter. Newlander's daughter. And yeah. then you, you, they show his first wife. You know, who in the, in, the season, in season two she passes away. Yeah. And, and Alan Arkin at, at his age, seventies, eighties, he still has women and. He's still active and sexually <laughs> active as well, you know, Viagra or whatever. That shows all his girlfriends, you know, and and then and then all of a sudden, season three, he's gone, and they show his funeral. And uh, well, that really is a, a you know a, a surprise because up to that point, you thought the two of them were inextricably interwoven in the series. Uh, they had such um, magic between them. Yes. Uh, and they fit so well together. The two are perfectly together. And Arkin, you know, for all the vulnerability that Michael, ba uh, Michael Douglas shows, Arkin doesn't have that vulnerability. He's a self-contained individual. He's very funny, very confident in his own skin. Yes. Um, and, then, and then you find out later that he left an estate of $150 million. You remember yeah. that part? Exactly. <laughs> no one expected that. <laughs> And, then, and, 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 and this happens, you know, this happens that somebody dies and you have no idea what that person was worth. And then you find out it's one hundred and fifty million dollars and the family goes nuts. Right. And dry humor, because the, the, the waiter in that restaurant, Musso's Grill or whatever, uh, he says to Sandy, you know, after uh, Alan Arkin's role died, he says, oh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Newlander was very kind and generous. And, and, and Sandy turns around and says, I'll give you generous. In other words, he's not kind. So these two had, a, had some kind of a back and forth, you know, close friend. I have friends like that, you know, close friends, for, you know, that, that the sort of a dry humor. So very good, good series. And I did have to look at season one and two to fill in all the pukas, because if you don't, I mean, you, you had mentioned season three, but 
you have to really see off the, to understand what came before, you know, the deaths and, and the inter interrelationships between people. So very good, very good movie. Um, and as you said, a lot of illness, you know, prostate problems. Uh, the <laughs> wife dies of leukemia at the end. Very sad. The hygiene, thing. hygiene issues. Yeah. A, a I think things of, that you never expect will be on, on primetime television. <laughs> never. We're talking about their issues in the bathroom. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he talk, they talk about things that, you know, normally are not, you know, talked about. But I mean, I've had training in our, I went to Strasbourg for a number of classes and then Bob Royals and, you know, this movie brings into my memory Deja Vu, Beverly Hills Flats, and I found out that uh, Newlander's house was in the mid Wilshire uh, on Lucerne. And then Sandy's house up in the hills, which is in also near Cuenga. I thought I used to live in Beverly Hills, um, hills in the hills near Mulholland. I didn't know that about you, George. Are I you have, sure you're not worth 150 million? No, unfortunately not. I wish I was, you know. <laughs> I mean, my, my grandfather and grandmother at one time were filthy rich, but then they lost everything overseas. Mm. Isn't that all family. over town? I so you know what's what's interesting here is this. You know Michael Douglas, and and you know you've grown up with him. We all have, um, and Kirk Douglas, of course, and and um, you we know lived we lived to we, over a hundred. Jay, Kirk Douglas lived to over a hundred. Yeah, yeah, but he was he was a little squashy at the end. Didn't mean to cut you off, but. Yeah. So, so you know, you always ask yourself. There was a movie years ago about Sunset Sunset Boulevard. It was about a an actress who was all shut shut in her, her home. She wouldn't come out. She had been a great star, and everybody wondered what happened to the great star. And and the funny thing here is that this is kind of an answer to that question. What happened to Michael Douglas? He's getting old now. What's he doing? What's he like? What's his life like? Well, of course, this is fictitious, but it's not that fictitious. And, and you say to yourself, this answers the question, what happened to Michael Douglas? What's his life like now? And, and, that, and that is very interesting kind of examination. The same thing with, with, um, with uh, uh, Alan Arkin. What happened to him? You haven't seen him in a movie in a while. He must be getting old. Uh, so this is the story of what, what he really is. And I would bet that in terms of personality type, they really like that. They really behave like that. They have friends like that. It's all about Beverly, Beverly Hills and $150 million. And the other thing is, you know, who actually are these guys? They, they come from where you and, you and I come, George. They come from New York. Um, they're both Jewish, right? They're, they're, you know, they got this Jewish New York sense of humor, but transplanted to Hollywood, to L.A. And the only, you know, thing that happened in the meantime is, is they had a successful career. And now look at them. So what you see is the Larry David, you know, uh, kind of dry humor, um, the curb your enthusiasm kind of humor. They're all in the same ball game. And I'm sure they are all like that to me, although it's not likely we're going to meet them. But we do meet them in these shows. So I'm, it's a valuable experience for everybody. You know, I couldn't say I was totally agree with you. That's one of the things I was going to say as well, that this is a trend. These guys are transplanted from the New York Metro. And there's a lot of New York Metro there. And, you know, from taking Strasburg courses you know, those, and, and other uh, that's what they teach you is to basically be yourself, you know, take things from your own life when you're acting and bring it into the scene, you know, and basically that's that's what we have here. We have two aging. Uh, I didn't recognize Alan Arkin either or Kathleen Turner. I didn't recognize him at all because he looks so different from what I remember him as. But as to get back, this is definitely, as you said, it's a New York. These are New Yorkers. Uh, from, and I grew up, I mean, I, I've only had distant Jewish ancestry, but, but uh, in, a, in a very Jewish neighborhood. I mean, there were only two Italians and us, you know, and, and, and everybody else was Jewish in Long Island, you know, that's Long Island. So I'm very familiar my closest friend, Alan Laskin in high school, you know, my closest friend. In college. So Kathleen Turner, I didn't realize that was her, you know, 
Yes. She was. She yes. was. The, the opening introduction to her is that she's um, a doctor. Um, she's doing some kind of activist uh, medicine in South America somewhere. Um, she talks to him on the cell phone um, anytime, all the time, what have you. She's his wife. Is very acerbic, cutting, nasty, divorced, divorced husband and wife type of humor. They never yes. let it leave themselves alone. They never let the other guy get away with anything. Sure. And in the end, I, I don't know if I saw the, the end of their relationship, but uh, what, what, what happens is they are brought together by the daughter. And um, now they have an opportunity to refresh their broken relationship. And, and this happens, it happens in LA and everywhere. Um, so here you have a divorced couple with a child who presents issues to rally around um, and they get closer. And you almost see them, you know, restarting their romantic relationship. Uh, and she is wonderful. She, uh, again, like, like her daughter, she's not so good looking these days, but boy, she's sharp. And she's got these, you know, these fantastic remarks she makes. And he doesn't, he can't handle it. Michael Douglas, Sandy, he can't handle it. Um, she's in charge. She's the strongest personality in the whole series. You love her. You like her because she's a doctor, because she's an activist. She's a, you know, an altruistic individual. And so um, I, I just love her influence on the family. Um, and, and what brings them together, of course, is that Mindy, who is in her, what, 20s, early 30s, Mindy starts having a relationship with this guy who is hysterical. And, and he is like 60, 65 years old, old enough to be her, her father, possibly her grandfather. And she's bringing this guy home. And he is, um, you know, in the Yiddish expression, he's kind of a schmuck. <laughs> he can't get it right. He gets in all kinds of trouble. And, and Mindy has to pick up after him. But, you know, whoever thought this stuff up with the family dynamics is a kind of genius writer. What, what did you think of him? I forget his name. Uh, Martin Reiser. Uh, what was his name? And Martin was his name. Is Martin, it? yeah. And then he's it's, 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 it's something Reiser. Wait a minute. Uh, Philip Reiser or whatever. Yeah, Paul Reiser. He's the actor. And they, they got, they, they had, he doesn't, it showed him to be bald, no hair, but I know he has hair. So maybe they, they did special effects to, to, to put the ponytail and, and, you know, have no hair. But uh, he's phenomenal. He plays that role to a T. I mean, he's just, he's amazing. You know, they, every one of them plays the role to the T. And one of the things that you alluded to, the relationship between Sandy and his ex, his first wife, played by Kathleen Herner, in some ways is very similar to his friendship with, you know, his Alan Arkin's role, where they're sort of putting each other down, but they have a lot of good feelings, love for each other. So I mean, it's a similar kind of thing, but it's like, it's all that, uh, that drive humor. And, and, and um, Sandy is, is, you know, he sort of accepts uh, uh, Martin, you know, but Alan, but Newlander, Alan Arkin's role does not accept this, this May, December marriage. And he's sort of really down on on um on uh you know martin you know being a school teacher blah 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 you know because he's not he's, he's a you know he's not so she, but you know mindy found a guy you know i mean maybe she didn't have many suitors you know i mean because you know maybe she, she's a really strong personality like her mother yes. and and then you have the acting class and you know you know as you said before at least in the plays uh in, in the series he's not really a successful actor at least not at the beginning and and um what's remarkable is that she is keeping it together and and somehow these people keep coming back to the class even though um sandy is really not much of a teacher <laughs> and, and he, he, he gives them all the wrong advice <laughs> and you really wonder if there's any value there but yeah. then um some guy that he knows i want to say the, the character is called Levinson. Levinson is a big producer, and Levinson is making a movie of Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea. Exactly. So they pick Sandy as the old man. 
<laughs> the Hemingway character. And they make this ridiculous um, effort at the old man in the sea. And guess what? What happens? You you tell the people what happens. He wins a a, 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 a gold, Golden Globes award, and, and and then he's he finally reach, reach makes that success that he wanted all his life, and 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 uh, so you know finally reached that pinnacle that he wanted because his to his friendship with Newlander, which was a uh, you know the his fr friend Newlander had sort of talked about him to Levinson. So um, th this, it's sort of, now, as you said, what happened, I mean, to get it to us uh, aside, Kathleen Turner's role, you know, the, the first wife, she passes away at the end of leukemia after uh, being the, the pastor or whatever for the marriage of her daughter. And oh, daughter. right. But she, she, still, she, she pronounced herself the, the, uh, the minister and <laughs> didn't she marry them. them. She became the minister <laughs> and she, she, she married them. So, uh, but it just uh, a lot of interplay between the different roles, the different characters. Each one played their role to a T. And as you were saying, these two elderly gentlemen initially from New York, you know, they, they played their roles very well. I mean, they're sitting in, a, in, in, in a Sandy's late model Mercedes convertible, right? Chatting, with, you know, the Alan Arkin role and Michael Douglas. Yeah. Just really, I mean, coming from New York, you know, this is like. Well, I mean, they're, they're blatantly honest, blatantly yes. honest. I don't know if you remember this movie. It was with Art Carney and another actor of, of similar uh, seniority yeah. who lived on the Upper West Side on Broadway in yeah. Manhattan. And they would sit on a park bench and trade barbs and stories yeah, and it's, it's part of an aging thing the same kind of relationship that michael douglas and alan arkin had in this movie and and what strikes me is that when you can portray that relationship which isn't easy uh -huh. you know you have to you have to make it honest mm -hmm. and so that that's a very important part of the writing for this series that they're complete they may be barbing each other and criticizing each other and making, you know, ranking remarks against each other, but they're honest. It's always honesty. It's humor and it's honesty, which is very appealing. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about also is the strange, um, <laughs> the, <clears throat> the strange coming together of of New Newlanders of Alan Arkin's children. One is this crazy woman who is. Uh, She's, she's had a useless life. She's a druggie. And the other is this, this guy who's in his 30s and he's uh, into some kind of religion. Scientology. <laughs> you remember? Scientology. And the two of them find out that Alan Arkin uh, has money or had money. And they are all over Michael Douglas, who has control of the money uh, to get the money. And it's so visible. And the audience, and me anyway, I mean, I'm saying, does, you know, doesn't the Michael Douglas character see that? How greedy they are, how salivating they are to get any money, and they're, they're really telling him all kinds of lies. But no, um, that's the thing about the Michael Douglas character, Sandy. For all of his vulnerability and all of the troubles he has, he's able to discern right from wrong. He's able to be a moral figure. Um, he's able to ascertain when somebody is giving him a line. <laughs> right, exactly. And that, and that makes him a hero again. <laughs> yeah, he, he plays that, I mean, all the different aspects of his personality, you know, that I'm sure that's the way he, he is in real life as well, that, that play into the role he's playing and uh, the, 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 totally um, meshed. You know, every, everybody's sort of, the, the roles are played very, very well. I enjoyed this, even though all the sadness, the people dying, you know, whatever. But there's a lot of comedy here, too. And, and then real life, you know, illness. I mean, I, I'm, your, I'm the outlaw, outlier. I, I don't have medical problems, major medical problems. But people my age, a lot of them, I mean, they, there's a row of pills, you know. They got all these different pills that they have to take, you know, every day. 
and uh, so it's similar, similar, you know, prostate issues, leukemia. Well, you know, is this going to be appealing to somebody who is old? Um, is it more appealing to somebody who's old and somebody is young? And if you're old and you watch this and you see, you know, these characters decline and die that way, and you know, uh, you know, have the challenges of people trying to take advantage of them, um, do you do you turn off or do you like it? How did you react to that? I mean, personally, was this something you could learn from? Or was it something that offended you? Was it something that you really rather not hear about? You know, the thing is, I'm pretty aware because I, I mean, I've had illness and my mother died of leukemia. My dad had heart disease. My brother well, had issues, uh, you know, but to me, I wasn't offended by this. Um, I guess I'm in I'm in a never never land because I think that coming on 74, I'm, I, I haven't developed, I have a few minor Manini issues, but you know, so to me, it wasn't offended. It wasn't scary. It didn't scare me. Because, would you, would you be more or less interested in this series if you were 25? Um, I think there's enough in this series uh, in terms of all the young students and the whole thing of how, you know, the Hollywood acting thing, acting class, uh, which I'm familiar with because I did that, um, to, to sort of make them into it, this, this factors that are interesting, plus the whole Beverly Hills scenes, you know, the, the hills, the Sandy's house and, and Newlander's house. And there's enough in there for the young people as well. There are a lot of interesting factors. And then, you know, yeah. um, th th see how the old farts up. live, you know, <clears throat> gives them a window on how the old farts live and what it's like to get old. But I'll tell you, my, my reaction to, you know, the aging issue and the health issues and family issues is, I say to myself, um, and maybe this is inaccurate, I say to myself, it's okay that, I, that I'm watching this because thank God I don't have those issues. Yeah. Um, and I have like a window on people, real people who do have those issues, who may never tell me as much as these characters are telling me about their issues because most people won't talk about it but this is a kind of a it's a window into their lives so you learn and thank god you don't have their problems but you learn about what problems you might have going forward so, so i think there's um there's a real value there and i think the the writer knew this and michael douglas knew this and certainly alan arkin knew it so it's a it's it's well worthwhile you know that's why uh, I had no trouble watching it because I felt that it was educational. I always feel that I have to get some education out of everything I watch. And this was one example of that. How, how do you feel about that? Did you learn? Oh, yeah. I mean, there was, there, there, it was educational for me, too, because, uh, you know, you, you show um, Catherine, Kathleen Turner's role. Uh, you know, she was taking medication. My mom was not. Uh, she, was, she, she was seeing Dr. Canty Rye over at... Uh, Lij, you know, New Hyde Park, but and she was just what she had blood transfusions. But she, so I learned that there's medication now for for leukemia because Kathleen Turner's role was oh. injecting herself with something for her leukemia. And I think that's a very, I think it's an important point, George. So yes, you know, your mother. We've all had somebody who died of something like leukemia, yeah. um, and uh, we may not have had the opportunity to really know about it. What I mean is we might have been too young or other people were closer to this individual than we were and, and um, you know, created a barrier for, for you know, uh, a barrier so that we could not really relate to this and learn about it. Um, so that's why this is so interesting to see somebody, a character, uh, with all the detail, um, getting sick and dying uh, in a situation where we, we might have known more before but we were not permitted to learn it as you know young people um so now this this gives us that that opportunity and and i think that's one of the great things about this series if they intended to appeal to a broad array of generations they succeeded so um okay what would you give it uh five on a scale of five or ten on a scale, scale of, of five, ten I, scale I would... of five what would you give it a five yeah it's 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 got all the different aspects you know 
that 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 make it a, a good series, an interesting series, you know, and um, and you know, I, for me, I've done a lot of reading. I, I know what, where we're going to go when we when we leave this earth, so I'm not a fear of of dying. But for those who don't who don't um, want to face this, you know, it, it it's really very educational, as you said. So sure, and you got to keep your sense of humor till the very end. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so so, and I would also give it a five, by the way. Um, but um, there are so many other movies. I know I'm, I'm watching them all the time and I jump from one good one to another good one and my wife finds them and we are awash in good movies. Yeah. So do you have any ideas about what you want to cover next, George? You suggested that bad education, you know, um, uh, and which I did see it because, you know, you, you piqued my interest because it is on in Rosalind on Long Island and similar to my background, you know, and, um, you know, in terms of the, the locations, you know, they discuss Syosset, Farmingdale, all these different places on Long Island. So I, I did, you piqued my interest. But I mean, that's, that's a possibility, you know, then there's, I, I don't know what else, you know, I, I, you know, I haven't been watching many movies lately, because I've been focused on, on going to school in my old age, and it's a tough program, you know. So, um, uh, I used to go to a lot more movies in my youth. So I'm going to have to put my thinking cap on and we'll discuss it, you know, uh, after the show. And, you know, if you want me to do uh, bad education, at least I've seen it already. And that's an in that interesting story about embezzlement, you know, and, and all it's the a true story. Very true story. Well, it it's true, but they, there's some change. They made some changes for the screenplay, you know, but yeah. um, but uh, it's it's it, it blocked. But I mean, they they stole millions. I mean, he's the administrator, and he was superintendent of school. <clears throat> and what's interesting is it stars uh, Hugh Jackman, yeah, and it's right. not the kind of role that you would expect Hugh Jackman to play. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And he plays well, okay, George. I, I I must say I really enjoy these discussions with you. It's great okay. fun uh, to watch the movies, and it's great fun to have a moment to compare notes about them. And I look forward to our next discussion. Very good today. You, you, you made a lot of good points today, Jay. Same for you. Thank you, George. George Kaysen, our movie reviewer here on The Movie Show on ThinkTech. Aloha, George. Aloha.